John Severson, the publisher of America's Surfer magazine, talks about his new film, Pacific Vibrations. Well, the project is a film, uh, Pacific Vibrations, and I was prompted by uh, my love of the ocean and uh, 20 years of involvement with the ocean and uh, seeing what's happening here in uh, the United States to the ocean. And so I've spent a year, the last year, working on the film and uh, trying to make a statement uh, about surfing and about uh, the shoreline and uh, what's, what's happened to our coastline, the marinas, uh, dropping rocks and uh, the pollution, and hopefully uh, to come up with a, a film that contrasts the beauty and, and uh, the problems and to maybe make, uh, in the end, a, a statement that would prompt a few people to take some action and uh, start doing something John is aware of problems for the sport, but is still confident of its future in the 70s. Well, it all depends on uh, on this particular situation that I've just talked about. I think that uh, serving has, uh, of course, a lot of possibilities, but if the trend doesn't uh, reverse itself, I think we're going to have fewer and fewer beaches and less opportunities to serve. Uh, if we can uh, straighten the problem out and... Uh, start doing something for the coast and I think serving has a, a tremendous future because uh, we've discovered the new board we've developed the new boards and uh, there's just uh, we can get to areas on waves we could never get to before and uh, surfing is more interesting than it ever was it's uh, it's a beautiful sport and we just need waves is there a place for the professional surfer well it uh, it depends on how it's run in the end. Uh, with hard and fast rules and regulations, it's really uh, sort of a, a paradoxical uh, situation. On one hand, you have, uh, you're asking the surfer to perform in a certain way to win something, but yet surfing, the whole idea behind surfing is freedom and uh, doing what you want to do. Now, if, if it can be handled in a certain uh, free manner, I think the, the, the uh, pro circuit has great possibilities. Publishing a monthly surfing magazine is a full-time occupation, yet John still manages to make films as well. Well, it uh, sort of fit in uh, sideways. Uh, it's a lot of work to put a film out, but uh, the magazine uh, uh, takes care of itself. We have a lot of really talented people working on the staff, and uh, of course the direction is the same, so it really fit in nicely. Uh, the magazine and the film are both directed toward uh, the ocean and uh, toward doing something about saving it. Things haven't changed much around the beach. The surf is still the same as it was a million years ago. Uh, it gets us into the antiquity of surfing. I feel that the early Hawaiians brought it to its highest point of development. But they did not by any means originate the sport. I think it dates back into the east coast of Africa long before the time of Christ. The Polynesians developed the sport very highly there and became a national pastime. It was indulged in by men, women, and children, and especially by the royalty who had all the time and the means to indulge in it. When Captain Cook came to the islands, 1778, he found the sport highly developed and a national pastime. From that time on, the Hawaiian race began to diverge in its interests. Very soon, the sport was forgotten for commercial pursuits and, and war, especially. By 1900, the sport had almost died out. By that time, Waikiki was a small village, palm trees, and was not as big as it is today by any means. Beautiful spot then although I didn't get there until 1924. Surfing had made a comeback by that time. It was well established, especially the Kahanamoku family had a great hand in it, mainly Duke. He put the surfing idea into my head. And the surf riding, and uh, it was like heaven to me, and uh, I uh, wanted to pass the word on to my friends in California, so I wrote the first book on it.